welcome to this side-by-side uh, -side action. <laughs> so this is uh, Wouter Tulp speaking. Uh, I'm in a Zoom call with Thomas Fluharty. And what we are going to do is we're going to draw paint from the same reference and talk while we do so. And, um, you know, let, let's see. I think it can be really interesting because Tom has his uh, blue indigo pencil crayon. Uh, I'm going to use uh, this uh, gouache paint. Um, and I have no idea if we are going to succeed, uh, but I think it's just interesting as an experiment and to see what will happen. And also to see the difference in, in the choices that we'll be making. So um, let's, let's get started. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, Tom. Are you are you there? Are you, yeah, actually. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Just a little disclaimer: we may choke, I might choke, and it doesn't really matter. I just want to get in here and and explore and just do some moves. I'm going to start charting the fucker out with this uh, Prismacolor 901 uh, pastel stick, and it's pretty cool. Um, so again, you know, as I start thinking about all this stuff, I'm thinking like. Well, how do I draw? And, and I have a really pretty good idea of how I draw, but I'm saying, you know, when, when everybody's watching, it's like, well, you know, I don't really do the same thing always twice. So all that to say is we're just going to get in here and draw and, um, it's, and hopefully we can just have some fun with it. So um, I don't really do the big shape first and do all that stuff. I just sort of start anywhere I want. Usually I start with the left eye. But I'm not going to do that today. So I'm just going to start with this mustache. This big so you're mold. basically letting your your drawing grow as you as you progress. Exactly, exactly. Totally. That's funny because I do draw the big shape, as you can see. Um, however, I do this. Uh, I think you call this the the blind contour way. Uh, yeah. So basically, I am looking at at those those big shapes first. Exactly. And I, I am doing this, this little sketch to, to uh, find the placement of the, of the big shapes, but actually I don't wanna focus too much on, on sketching uh, because I, I really want uh, the paint to do the work. And just like you mentioned, I don't have a, a way of doing things, or at least I'm not aware of it. Uh, so it is, it is exciting, and but I think that the best paintings happen when you when you just jump and you may fall. You don't have an idea where you may land because that means that you are taking chances, and you can discover new things. And I think that's that's always more interesting than to to repeat yourself. But at the same time, it's a scary thing because you know you might just fail. Yeah, the other thing I've realized um, more so in the last uh, year is that I'm not trying to sound like super like uh, ethereal here, but drawing for me, it, it's like a magic. It's like a, a, a muse, like a, a moment that happens. And it's like, you know. Oh, you're, you're freezing. Just have to wait till Tom's back with us. Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. So you froze for a sec. Okay. So what I'm saying is, drawing is a uh, it's a magic. It's like a, it's a, wonderful drawings happen happen like uh, magically in one sense. You know, we have experience and we have knowledge, but there's just sometimes it's just magic that happens in a certain un unpressure moment. You know, where you're just you're just messing around. It's almost like when you try to be funny, you can't be. <laughs> it's just like the comedians, like, okay, make me laugh. And it's just like, well, it doesn't really happen that way. You know, like, I can never be a comedian, but I'm funnier more just as, as the moment unfolds. And so it's like that with drawing, I found it's just magical. You know? Yeah, it is. It's, really it's interesting. I see you uh, using both uh f the flat side of the, of that crayon but also using sharp lines is there a, a a thought behind when you use either one of them no i just want to show off 
That's all I'm doing. <laughs> going on. No, um, Try harder. <laughs> so it's really a matter of um, just some lines want to be firm. Some lines, some lines I want to be, uh, in other words, I'm committing on the actual lines. Those are important, the, the fine lines. And the other lines I want to hold more as shape. So I'm probably more thinking about this um, more tonally when I'm thinking, uh, when I'm doing a swath. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah, absolutely. Another thing I do here is I also think about logically there's, there's a line that goes down this, you know, the egg of the face, if you will, you know. And mm -hmm. these, just, these, these uh, features shoot off. But you always have to understand, and, and I'm always trying to remember where is that center line, because once this nose jets off at an angle, it comes back to this filtrum. And that filtrum is like, uh, it's like a, an anchor point. And, and there's this symmetry to the face where these lines go, they, they track all the way down. Is that they still, still is this so necessary when you exaggerate? Yeah, it is for me, unless, unless you just want it to get wonky. But I still want to know about where, I want to know about where uh, this, um, w where to place that filtrum, you know, like the filtrum mm -hmm. from the nose down to the lips. And I always do that. I always draw the nose to the filtrum down to the center of those lips exactly, you know, right to the center of those lips. And then there's a center, exact center of the actual bottom lip. And then it shoots underneath again right here. And then this chin shoots back out. So I'm always thinking about that logically. It's interesting. Looking at, at the way we approached it, it, it's almost the exact opposite, where you are already filling in details. And yeah. I'm, I'm really focusing only on the, on the big shapes. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. way this is my my palette i have this little plate and i just have uh you know i i make a mess of my palette all the time so maybe it's it's not the best thing to show but in a while this will be just one big gray mess um, but it it i don't ha have a way of of really you know there was a, a teacher of mine in, in art school he had this way of pre-mixing all his colors um, I, I don't do that. I really paint intuitively when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah I understand. I, I'm probably, I'm probably more intuitive as well, but I'm also, uh, I'm also thinking about the skull as I draw and not just letting things happen. I'm in my brain. There's these ideas and concepts that, um, the, you know, where is the skull? And I have this little tiny skull that I've drawn from for a long time, but I'm always aware of it. And then these side planes as well. I'm always thinking of planes and going in and out of um, representational instruction, classical mm -hmm. education, if you will, and then caricature and exaggeration. I think they're both valid. I think they're both uh, handy skill sets because exaggeration gets poo-pooed by the by the uh, the cult of representational art. Oh yeah, um, but it's extremely hard to do it. Uh, it. It is. It's tricky, and it takes a long time to figure it out. Yeah, and and for me, you know, I think it's just one of the tools you have as an artist to express yourself. You can use texture, you can use shapes, and you can push those shapes if you feel like you need to. There's no. Well, you know, there are, there are no rules. And I, I always think it's strange to think of it like that. Just like you mentioned, making a joke, you know, telling a joke in a, in a good way, that's, that's a craft that's really hard to do. But I th feel that there still is this division in art where serious art, uh, there's serious art versus art that has has comedy in it and uh, caricature is is one of that and to do a good car caricature is is really a challenge so in, in my opinion there there's no real difference in high or low art yeah exactly. there, there's there's good and bad 
things that are created, obviously, but it's not uh, the the subject matter is isn't uh, what makes a, a piece of art good or bad. I think. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's just do what you love, do what you like, you know, put in, you know, absorb all these great artists that have inspired you through through history and steal from them and take what you love and make it your own and work on your work on your craft you know like if you love mm. you know representational art that's fine but you know as long as you do what you love i mean that's really why people like like this kind of stuff because we're really talking about what we love you know mm. this yeah love, a love moment if you will like not to be cheesy but really these festivals and these conferences it's we all love something Mm. You know, it's super cool because we just love watching this stuff because it's so complicated and it's it's difficult and you see you see so yeah, I I get... to to my mighty little uh, uh, pen pencil. What's that? Sorry, I lost you for for a for a bit. Also, I said now I'm going to do the eyes. I haven't drawn the pupils in yet. And um, one thing I want to say before I do it is, this is not the eye that I just blocked in. I'm I'm drawing these shapes of the eye. So this eye on this reference, the the, the whole shadow map. So I am, I'm losing you again, Tom. It's okay. I think, I don't know what he was going to say, obviously, but I, I'm basically doing the same thing when it comes to the eyes blocking in the, the big shapes rather than thinking of this is an eye that I'm drawing. I'm, I'm really right. thinking of what those shapes are. Right. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. That's exactly right. It's like, I remember, I know my uh, painting teacher, Joe Packett, he said, he said, I didn't draw a boat right there in the water. I drew shapes. And yeah. Was, and when you think of it like that, basically everything should be just as difficult or easy to paint or draw because, you know, you're, there is no difference between a hand and an eye or a, or a foot, because everything is just shapes, basically. But it's just really hard to look at it that way, because before we know it, we are already turning it into something in our minds. Exactly. I was just going to say something here. Now I'm getting ready to put the irises in and the pupils, and I, and I do the iris first and then the pupil. So basically, um, I'm going to get in here and I got a very sharp pencil, a sharper my pencil when I do this, because this is where accuracy and lightness comes in. I can't, and I do a blind contour around that eye there. I, I wasn't looking as I did that just because I want to track this eye. And for, I do, for those who, who are unfamiliar, could you explain what blind contour, contour means? Yeah. So in other words, when I draw this, uh, this, this uh, iris, uh, I could easily just look at my paper and draw it, but I, I need, I need, I, I want to draw as it looks here. And I want to uh, draw with a blind contour, not really. So all that means is the blind contour is if I'm going to draw this, this edge of his head, I can look at my paper and draw it, or I could start my pencil here, look at the photo or the reference of the subject, move my eye, I uh, move my pencil. And I, contour not really is every time I move my pencil I'm not looking at my paper I'm looking at I'm looking at um, the subject and I'm tracing it with my pencil does that make sense 
Yeah, so uh, I lost you for a little bit there, but so you're basically looking at your reference more than you are at, uh, at your paper, right? Yeah, exactly. Another thing I'm starting to do here, this is kind of funky. I'm drawing, when I drew, draw an eyeball, I'm not drawing it completely round. Sometimes these, uh, even though the iris is completely a round circle, I'm actually breaking them up these days into a, a square lines. So you see that eye that I just did right here? It has two moves. It goes this way and then that way. Mm. So I don't know. It's just, it's an interesting thing that I'm having fun with. I'm not trying to make a statement, but it's kind of cool. And so now I'm going to go dark in this whole mass over here. But I also know what's happening because I understand how to draw the eye. But really, I'm trying to draw the shadows and keep these things more as a mass as opposed to hair and tear duct. You know what I mean? Like, I'm more interested in shadow masses. Because you can capture the shadow mass you got. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's really the value structure that defines the, the form. Yes, exactly. Almost if you broke it down into a graphic shape and you just did an ink line, they will, great comic book artists, inkers, they'll, they'll have a mass, uh, just a mass of the shadow of the eye, then it looks just like the person because all they did was just draw the shadow. Yeah. They didn't worry about, they didn't worry about um, the details, they, but they nailed the shadow. Exactly. Shadows look like people, basically. Well, it's as simple. You could say it really simple. When you turn out the light, you don't see anything. Right, exactly. Everything feels good here. I've nailed it. I feel like I've nailed it. I, I'm happy with it. When I say I've nailed it, I, I feel happy with the fact that I, I didn't struggle. And hmm. I, have, I have struggled many, many times on any given day. And, and it's, it's frustrating. And struggling continues to happen. But I will say, somebody said, if, art is awesome if you can get past the first 40 years. And so that's actually... Uh, you know, true, if you can get past the first, you know, number of years, it becomes really cool and your success rate becomes pretty high. I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, no, I don't think you have. <laughs> No, it is, it, it is true. It feels like when I look at the way you, you draw, it feels really like a combination of both uh, a lot of knowledge. Like you mentioned, you, you think about what the structure of the, of the skull is, but at the same time, it looks as if you really don't even care. And, and I think that's a powerful combination where, where it's really knowing the rules to, to break the rules. And I think that's where you, you are really uh, becoming the one who's in charge of the, of the drawing, instead of just following your reference, you are yeah. using the reference to, to create your vision. And that's when it becomes interesting because now I can look into the way you observe this instead of you trying to match something that's already there. Exactly. I've noticed that about your work as well, where, you're doing a landscape, but you're, you're just, you're making it say what you want it to say. And your drawings as well. They're super cool. It's like you're not a slave to reference. No, I think that is something that, you know, we all start out that way. In, in the beginning, you just want to be able to, to capture that likeness or to, to even make it look like something but there is this point where you want to get past that and start to draw and paint things the way you want it to look. That's where your, your artistic vision comes out. Right. I was going to say, um, sometimes under the eye, 
it's not so much about eyelashes under on the bottom part of the eye. Sometimes there's these just shapes that something these there's there's tone and there's across the face that happen that if you can sort of shape these things you can you can document them and then you can move across the face by by observing them and drawing them and outlining them in one sense yeah so do i i lost you for a little bit so do, are you saying that you are basically playing with the with the tools that you have? You can go back and forth from from line to to flat colored area value. Is that it? Yeah, I guess what I was saying was, as I move, as I'm drawing underneath an eye. I don't know what you heard here. As I'm drawing underneath an eye, um, I'm not just drawing eyelashes. I'm realizing that there's 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 gray shapes. There's gray tone that's going on there's a shape like up here on his head over here if i were to look at this it, it kind of does this there's this outline of this gray mass that signifies the side of his head yes the side of his head i just simply outline that and it creates this style i'm not trying okay to, yes you're talking I'm, about style i'm just charting tone yes sort of like you know it just i'm just i'm just putting a pencil around the tone that I see, and that sort of defines the drawing for me, because there's this information. And then I'll move across the face, because I'll just start drawing that tone as I move across the face. That's awesome. This guy's face is insane. I'm going to move down here. <clears throat> How long have we been going now? To be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> Again, I'm thinking um, three dimensionally as well. Like if I were an ant and I was crawling around this thing, this cheek, it goes down and then it goes down. This is like a curved, it's like if I was sculpting, this would be like this big wall of flesh here. And then this is, you know, you, you'd actually go down underneath, go into that crease and then it goes this way. Mm. So I'm, I'm just always thinking three dimensionally and sculpting with my pencil and knowing that these things are round. I actually go back and forth with that. You know, I like at the moment I'm really exploring painting really in a in a way that you know these become graphic shapes as well that almost become flattened and leave the the turning it into into 3D to the viewer much more. What do you, you mean? You understand what I mean? No, 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 I'm not I'm not grabbing that. What would you say? Okay. So like uh, I'm doing right now, you know, I'm creating these, these shapes on top of the eyebrow, right. which uh, basically are, are the in-between values of, of the, that shape. But I'm not literally painting everything as I see it. And basically it's, it's similar to what you just mentioned, where you draw around that little shape Right, right, that, right. That you don't really see that in the in the reference, but it becomes that that style, that that right. uh, you know, it still communicates the idea, but in your own in your own way. Right, I understand. Yeah. Also, I think you know it's interesting how people hold their pencils. I go in and out of this. I got detail, I'm doing this, but when mm. I'm, I'm trying to do this and I'm twisting and turning my pencil as well, I might pull it from the top, but whatever, sometimes I'm doing lines like this where I get it in the crease and I just pull it and I get this really cool line. 
this over here is a big shadow mass here. So I'm going to get in here and really just get dark in there. And, and this is going down, you know, again, it's this mass that sort of goes underneath here, this nose. There's very few lines on a face. And I remember when I was in this drawing, a uh, painting class with this teacher, um, Jeff Hernanko, he's really a great artist. He said, he looked at my work and he said, you know, your work is very linear. I was like, I don't even know what you mean by that. <laughs> he said, I was, I was using a lot of lines. So if there was a, um, a nose, I was using a line as opposed to coming up to this nose with just tone. Yes. When I started using tone to hold things, my work took on a whole nother uh, beauty and a whole nother level of sophistication. You know, all of a sudden I was paying attention and being a lot more sensitive. Does it, it have to do also with, with uh, painting what you see in, instead of painting symbols of, of what, what it represents? So instead of knowing what, what an eye is and what that looks like, now you're just drawing or, or painting that, that little shape that exists because of the shadow. And with every lighting condition, that also changes. So now you have to really observe what, what that shape looks like. And in this situation, this shape is, is being interpreted as, as being an eye. Right, that's it, that's it, that's beautiful. It's less about lines and more about um, just value and, and tone, you know? Shall. Yes. Things are held together by value. Okay, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to darken a little bit. Okay, so I'm Now, I ran out of paper here, but I would have made his head a lot bigger, did the top of his head a lot bigger like he did, but I ran out of paper, so <laughs> just, um, you know, it's, it's okay. It feels like I'm starting to rush a little bit since painting is just so much slower than drawing. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to darken. So did you wait with those, those heavy darks until this moment? Yeah, actually, that's a good point. So basically, uh, without getting too heady, I don't want to go super dark. I want to create the create these uh, or you know sort of dark and go darker. So a few places I've gone dark and right now I'm going like almost on a value scale of one to ten. If if ten is black or extremely dark blue and like uh, zero is 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 the white of the page, I basically worked in around a, a seven value scale right here. Like the shadow mass is a seven value mm -hmm. and. Now going in and adding in the nines or the accents, you know? Yes. So I don't have any highlights. Highlights and accents are basically twin brothers living in different neighborhoods. So it's <laughs> like, you know, the, the, the one lives in the, li in the light and one lives in the dark. So, that, so accents live. Oh, that's cool. I never heard it like that. To, you have to pull this all together with so Tom can you hear me we're, we're losing you again I don't really saying anything anymore. and I'm going to darken all of this is really this whole thing is living in this I'm going to just darken this mass here all of this, I don't want really any light in, in my br even this isn't really white. So I'm gonna get in here and just sort of darken the sound. I want this though, back here to be a little bit darker. So what I'm looking for and which is 
in, in gouache is, is a difficult thing because gouache doesn't allow for gradients so easily. Yeah, right. So, but even though I'm trying, you know, you can see that in, in this area a little bit. Um, it, it, I feel like the, the camera increases the, the contrast a, a little too much, but hopefully you can still see that in this area, I'm trying to do that. And here as well, where I'm, I'm uh, exaggerating at the moment to, to make my point, but I'm blending foreground and background because uh, even though you can see in the reference that over there, we do see a, a contrast I'm exaggerating that and blending that value so that it becomes just one one value and it completely dissolves into the background and i'm I'm looking for those areas to push so that uh, all you get is basically uh, areas that have hard edges uh, like I'm doing right here or areas that are completely lost and everything in between all kinds of edges. But that's how uh, with all these values that you have, how you can create uh, an, an image that, that comes across. I, I, I'm having a little trouble saying this in English, but um, you know, either right here, for example, you have this, this hard edge and right here, it's, it's, a, it's a lost edge. And I think that contrast is is always very interesting because now I'm not drawing a line. That's the, the side of the head, but I'm letting you as a viewer uh, finish that area and, and create that little line there. Cool. I think that's where a painting becomes more interesting to look at, where not everything is is defined by me but you can still imagine some, some areas yourself. I love that. So I was recording this and my, my camera said that I've reached my max recording. So that's okay. okay. No, but I'm fine as a camera, as a webcam, which is what I'm using it as for, for Zoom here, it's fine. And I'm fine whenever we stop. What's that? Sorry, what did you say? Can you still hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was wondering what did you what did you just say? You were fine with? I said I'm fine with whenever you want to stop. Okay, okay. Um, I don't care how, how long we go. And, you know, another thing I'd say here is I, I didn't really push this, like, with, a, with, with extreme caricature. It's definitely pushed, but I don't really do big nose caricature where that's like, all of a sudden, this guy has the biggest nose because he has a big nose, and I, and I make sure his eye fits somewhere around, around his nose. I just, I do portraitive sort of push caricature where it's, it's highly, well, it's not really representation, representational, but it's, it's definitely um, caricatured and pushed, but it's just not as extreme. I find if I try to do too far, it just lose it. It doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah, I, you know, I, I would, if you would just say this is a portrait, it wouldn't be strange to me, you know, I, it's just your personal way of, of doing a portrait, but it doesn't, I understand what you mean, you know, there are, there, uh, when you say caricature and you say big nose caricature, um, it makes me think of, uh, you know, when you see at, at theme parks, yeah, um, you know, sure. and I think that's that's a, a top sport, you know, to be able to do that. But it's yeah. a it's a different uh, you you have a different goal when you when you do that. You know, in in a short amount of time, you have to create an image that 
that looks like the person in, sitting in front of you. Um, and what you're doing is, uh, I think, is closer to, to doing a, a, a painting or a, a drawing, you know, a, a different genre. So for me, it, I would, if I would look up your work, I would hit uh, Google with portrait rather than caricature, I think. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I've obviously done caricature pushed uh, extreme. Like there's a Trump is a King Kong on the <laughs> and he has a big, huge, long face. And that's, that, that has a specific purpose. But if, like you said, by and large, it's like um, I did a Sir Hillary poise for a takeover where I was borrowing from uh, Jean-Aguy's Dominique uh, Ang. And that, that face is fairly portraited, but I love it when people push far. Like there's, there's a few friends I have that are just off the charts and they, they can just draw instantaneously at these theme parks. And, and that's, a, that's a real skill. Like that's a really huge skill. That's not easy. And Absolutely. You crush it like all the time, like instantaneously. And I, it would take me a while to really do that and figure it out and, you know, but it, I don't really find myself drawn to that, but I love seeing it done extremely well. You know, like Tom Richmond does a, an amazing spot on, you know, 10 minute ink drawing that's just off. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Yeah, I think in the end, it's it's not about the style or the genre. It's it's much more, you know, how uh, the, does it uh, speak to you when you see it? Right, exactly. So usually this would take me, a, you know, if I took two to three hours on this piece, I could really knock this out and have it be really cool. Uh, there's a lot of things that I, I do uh, when I'm not under under the light, you know, with a light happening or with a camera rolling. Um, but this is all exactly what I do, but I'm just saying like... How, how is it different? What, what are, when people look at this video, what do they not see what you usually do when the no, camera is off? Exactly, yeah, they see exactly what I do. What I'm getting at is um, there's other moves that I'll do later, like come in with an X-Acto knife and scratch things out. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, here and really, um, uh, I mean, I could even do one right now. Like right now, I'm still treating this as a mass and I'm working up and getting darker as I go. Like this eyebrow right here is a complete just dark shadow mass. But I'm also going to get in here and, and give myself a really sharp pencil. And I would start giving myself some sort of defining shapes that would sort of um, mask this out and put some lines in there just to sort of make this more about a shadow than in anything in specific. It's, it, mm -hmm. you know, I would just take that mass and just sort of do some lines in there just to just to make it look more like a mass as opposed to lines inside of that shadow. Okay, yeah. Makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. So even over here, I'm gonna do some lines that are round because I'm thinking three-dimensionally and this this whole thing, this, this, this round nose here, and I would get in there and start doing this. All I was getting at is um, I would also start scratching things out once I get to the very end of it all. And the scratching out is that probably to have uh, sharp lines, but then instead of having blue lines, you would have white uh, lines. Yeah, I try to only reserve the, the scratching out for uh, maybe some slight adjustments. Or um, like this would be uh, an example of um, um, well, there's a few things. Here's this tool that is... Uh, um, it's a uh, it's a tool for um, scratch board, 
but it works so freaking cool on this paper. So <laughs> I come in and, and just started getting here and just sort of scratch this stuff out a little bit, you know? Mm. And it just sort of creates this cool hair. Also, That's I awesome. In, I come in with my exacto knife and just sort of start scratching out some really cool stuff. But I would I would really set this up. You can see how cool that is. I might even come in here and sort of scratch out a little bit of this note, just to highlight right in here. Even this eye has a nice highlight right here, but I'm saying I'm not ready for this yet. I'm just trying to show it on the actual, uh, just as a quick jump to it. I'll also maybe scratch this out just a little bit here. That's really cool. You know, you might, you just there's just ways to sort of create some forms but again i have to go over all of this with this with this uh other pencil and sort of um sort of get it all like almost like a, a one value everything is like a one and there's no real strong highlights distracting but it's all held together in this almost like a multiplied layer hmm. you know if you were to put yeah layer of or something all of a sudden your drawing comes together it's like dude that's cool what you do so I just put a multiplied layer on it. sort of holds it all together and i'm going to go dark on the edge over there so i can go in with darks a little bit later because i basically constructed this image in the seven value range now i can go dark where i need to yeah it's interesting i think when if if I wasn't under the pressure of having a camera and doing my own thing, I think uh, what we started out with when, you know, painting and drawing is, is magic. It, it's not something you can summon and, and you know, now I'm, now I'm going to do an amazing drawing or an amazing painting. You, you can just sit down and, and, and try to do your best. I think a lot of it has to do with, with focus, uh, but then still, um, what you probably would see if if the camera wasn't on me and we would have much more time, um, you know, gouache has, as I mentioned, is a uh, is challenging when it comes to creating those those gradients. So I would probably spend more time on that. And now at at this moment, I'm doing a little bit of both. So. Uh, for the sake of showing how I can create gradients both by painting wet in wet or using a dry brush, uh, all, all kinds of ways. Uh, probably I would wait with, with all that a little bit and do that later um, and focus more on, on big mass. So for example, here under the chin and the, and the lip right there, I feel that would need more attention before I would go into into creating those kinds of details. But uh, that's, that's probably what you would see. And another thing that you would probably see, uh, that really has to do with, with the focus, I think. Uh, it's you, when I'm alone, I get in a state of mind that is really hard to achieve uh, when you know people are watching or when you have to talk at the same time. It's, it's really, uh, an intuitive meditative uh, state that is, is really hard to achieve when you are, when you're talking and, and, and filming it. No, exactly. Right. Right. I was listening to this guy, Rick Rubin, um, who's the world's top music producer. And they were asking him about how do you get these people to create at the levels that they do. And he kind of said that basically create with your heart and without without paying attention to anything and to try to create uh, beauty happens more engaged with the heart engaged and then the brain comes in later and takes a look yes oh that's a good one cool because it's like if if i'm so worried about pulling this off because the pressure's on it takes away it sucks out the magic of what we do you know like and that's the other thing about social media it's just like we're always drawing to, oh, I'm going to put this up, man. This is me. And you have all this nonsense in the way. And it's like, that's why I just sort of just kind of turn it off from time to time and 
um, because I, I just want to just draw just for the sake of drawing, see if I can just get lost in something. But, but then again, you know, the mind comes back in and, you, you know, ego, and it's just like, it's just ridiculous. So. Yes. Well, it's, it, I think it's some a problem that m most people have to deal with nowadays. It, you're not the only one. Totally. So that is the drag. You know? so all I'm doing right now is just sort of making these shadow masses, the shadow mass in, in this, this whole area. This is just a mass. There's not a lot of detail. It's fairly dark. Well, it's interesting what you mentioned, uh, because that is actually something we spoke about right before we were going to, to do this recording. Um, I was going to draw with the blue pencil initially. And I, at the very last moment, I decided to, to start painting instead. And the reason is that, you know, I get easily distracted when I, when I see you draw, you know, I can do my own drawing with a blue pencil, but when I'm doing that while you are doing this and you know, you are known for this and you have your way of doing this. And so it so easily becomes competition for me. And I'll try to, to, even though it's, uh, I don't want to, to look at it as a challenge, it just happens that, you know, I'm, I'm starting to look at, oh, what is he doing? I'm, I'm going to try that too. Or I'm, and I don't want that. So that's why I decided to, to paint and do a completely different take. So it, it's much clearer that this is my way of, of doing this. And I, I, it's just easier for me if I have a, a whole different technique altogether than you know, staying so close to what you are doing because that, since I get easily distracted in, in such a way, uh, I needed to, to help myself a little bit, try to stay away from that. That's awesome. Well, one thing about you is you do, you can pick up a, a burnt match and draw with it. You can draw and paint anything. And so, you know, it, your skill, your skill sets are so, so rare. Not many people can do that. Oh, so thanks. Exciting that you, uh, you know, that you just want to be yourself and do what you do. I'm always inspired by what you do with whatever you draw with. So. Oh, thanks. That, that feeling is absolutely mutual. Thanks. Do you feel like uh, you are uh, you you have a, a way of of because that's what you mentioned at the beginning. You don't have this way of doing things, but I think f for people looking at your at your work, they could think that you do have because you know they're all these blue line pencils. They're all uh, pushed when it comes to shapes. So, do you? How do, how do you look at that? Do you feel like you have this this way or is it a bad thing? Do you feel like you're repeating yourself sometimes? Repeating myself because I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything other than just. We, we're not supposed to hear the answer, I think. You still there, Tom? Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. What I was saying is I'm not trying to do anything. I'm not trying to, you know, repeating myself. I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to draw to understand and get to the next drawing. Just, awesome. Like, yeah. That's so enjoying the love of drawing. I'm just like captured by this thing. And, and I just want to get better at it and understand and, and, and get to the next level. And so, it's just always fascinating to me. I'm not trying to make it anything, you know. I don't that is so cool. That I think that's really powerful because, as I mentioned, you know, I, I uh, easily start to to think about what I do, and when I do, it it's never it's never 
<laughs> making things better, you know. Uh, when I'm painting or when I'm drawing, that's where I am, that's all there is. But when I start to think about it, what does this mean? You know, what does this say about me as an artist? Those kinds of thoughts, they really mess up the the, the fun. And, you know, I think it's, it says that you can really stay true to yourself if that's how you uh, how you deal with this. It just drives for me, not I want X amount of followers or I want to get so many likes. Like that's ridiculous. And we all have fallen into that in any given day. But I think at the end of the day, it's just like, wow, I want to understand this. I, I want to know mm -hmm. how to draw better. I want to know how to draw awesomely and get to this next level, whatever that is. And um, I'm pressing in hard. It's sort of like, I'm not in any way equating myself with Michael Jack, Michael Jordan, but he shot 503 free throws a day. And he was Michael Jordan. So it's like, I'm not Michael Jordan, but I don't care. I'm just going to keep shooting. <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a great person to be inspired by, I think. If you arrive, you stop growing, bottom line, and then you're done. You're done as an artist. You yeah. I'm an exacto knife, and I'm going to just do a few little strokes here. Of, uh, yeah, I think we're we're ready to to call it a day, right? So Tom, yeah. um, before we uh, before we go, do you want to uh, promote anything your your uh, work or your schoolism class or uh, anything? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Valor. Um, I have a new schoolism class going to be dropping in uh, January fourth, and they That's just cool. It's, like, it's the 901 Indigo Blue with Thomas Lewhardt. It's this approach, um, this the drawing techniques of what I'm thinking as I draw. And we kind of hit on it today, but it's 10 lessons of really cool things that I'm doing every single day. So, you know, to, to get back to this one question is I'm doing the same things every day. I'm not just winging it every day like whatever happens happens. Are you there? In uh, January 4th, but it's going to be 10 weeks of just drawing, advanced drawing like this. Uh, uh, we're, you, you, connection is breaking up, Tom. Can you hear me now? Yes. So January 4th, what's then? As I've been drawing this way for the last five years. Sorry, man. Didn't hear much of that. So last thing I heard was January 4th. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. 
All I was saying is January 4th, this new class, Prismacolor 901, or the 901 Indigo Blue with Thomas Fluharty, uh, starts. And uh, if you just head over to Schoolism, uh, you can pre-register. Uh, but it's all the concepts that I'm using as I have been drawing this way for the last four years. But it's just, it's just the drawing. And what am I thinking about as I draw this way? That's it. It's That's nine, cool. Nine yeah, so well, it's I'm looking forward to that. Thanks, man. And what are you doing? What what classes? Uh, I know you have a drawing workout that looks awesome too. Yeah, that's that's brand new. So uh, it's a painting workout session. So every day I do uh, a thirty minute painting uh, exercise, and you can paint along with me. And it's a nine week course, so you will. There are sixty three of these exercises, and. Uh, it, it's it's over at schoolism so for for those interested uh i'm painting with gouache right now uh that course i'm doing digitally uh but if you want you can do the exercises traditionally as well um, they're really not focused so much on on photoshop techniques but much more uh are they focused on painting techniques on, on, you know, the, the principles of painting, how to deal with values, how to deal with structure, texture, brushwork, all those kinds of things. So that's basically uh, the, the latest thing happening uh, for me when it comes to schoolism. That's so cool. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. So maybe I should. Uh, yeah. Let me just uh, do a scan of this, and I will uh, put it at the end of the recording. So and and of yours as well, uh, so we can uh, people can show uh, it in a in a more detailed way. Okay. That's Thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you next time. Thanks, friends. Bye-bye.